prince of Persia? A prince of Persia. Ah! A miracle! Hi everyone and welcome to Paper and Light, the YouTube channel about movie posters. Today we've got a complex, rain-soaked mystery on our hands. I'm talking about 2013's Prisoners. I the entire house, they're not here. Dad, there was this RV and they were playing on it. There was, we thought there was someone inside. You wait here. Let me go. I couldn't find them. I dropped some hints about this film in our last episode, and it was correctly guessed by YouTube user CurtisWood8010. So cheers to you, cuz. You won! You did it! My poster for this film is a double-sided one-sheet measuring 27 inches by 40 inches, and it was very generously donated to me along with a host of other posters from a local fan of the channel. Thank you again so much, Meg. You made my poster dreams come true. Meg worked at a local theater and squared away a number of posters over the years, many of which are gonna be featured on this channel in future episodes, so thank you again so much. Prisoners is one of those films that can stick with you for a long time. I first saw it in the theater in 2013 and it's certainly stuck with me ever since. On the surface, it's a whodunit police procedural kidnapping story, but below that surface, it's this raw, disturbing film about the nature of what we are willing to do to escape from our own prisons, from our own trauma. Everything is firing on all cylinders here. You have a cast that's giving some of their career best performances all through the wide, unblinking eye of cinematographer Roger Deakins. Frame up, he could be flying down any second. Just don't be afraid of the zoom, you're not Roger Deakins. Mike? Prisoners was directed by French-Canadian dynamo Denis Villeneuve. This was his first English language film, and since its release, he's gone on to become one of the most well-respected, accomplished directors of his generation. When I see his name attached to a project now, it becomes a must-watch, as it should for you. There are several visual themes that are meticulously and beautifully captured by Roger Deakins. Religious iconography and the lack thereof, mazes, trees, suburban life, all through this rain-soaked gray haze. Hugh Jackman gives a very forceful, simmering performance as a father whose daughter goes missing. He's willing to do anything to get her back, even if that includes compromising his morals. Viola Davis and Terrence Howard play neighbors whose daughter also goes missing and and they deal with their grief and trauma in a very different way. Paul Dano plays the main suspect and he gives the type of performance that we've come to expect from him and the rest of the cast is all solid. But there's one standout here and this is the main reason why I wanted to talk about this movie and that is the performance of Jake Gyllenhaal as Detective Loki. Detective Loki, I'm heading up the investigation into your daughter's disappearance. Please. Sit down. Sometimes there are these scenes in movies where an actor does something so different, so unique, so engrossing that you can't look away. You just want them to be on screen the whole time. Jake Gyllenhaal introduces all of these interesting character traits, these facial tics, body language, and vocal tone. You get the sense that his character has this inner force, this inner rage, and he's holding it all together by a thread, focusing it on the task at hand. There's a slim chance that he might just completely lose it. And the intrigue comes from the fact that he doesn't. Now why did you look for my f***ing daughter? Why did the f Hey, 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 hey. Don't hey, follow hey, me. Hey, hey, Mr. Dole, Mr. Dole. Gyllenhaal reportedly watched hours of police interrogation footage to prepare for this role, not to mention he was coming off of his other turn as a police officer in End of Watch. He had his character expanded to include Zodiac tattoos, a Freemason ring, and specific postures. And I wanted the character to be a mystery, like, n but determined. So the audience had two things going on at the same time. Sometimes you just add on mm -hmm. to things, you know, and they become something totally different than what was written on the page. 
but still with the same intention. He became a bit of a, of a jerk. I mean, mm -hmm. like a, a narcissistic, mad ego, and had, we had some uh, good fights. We are very close, so we, we, can, we could, it, it was possible to afford those kind of uh, confrontations together. Mm -hmm. I feel very comfortable to talk about this because I know that if you ask him the same question, he will have exactly the same answer, you know? The results are a character that I genuinely want to see more of, and that hair. My God, that hair. I can't really say enough about this. He steals every scene, he elevates every single aspect of this movie. And it's not to say that this performance is for everyone. I could easily see someone watching this and going, what is that guy's problem? But sometimes movies just click with individuals and this individual performance has always been one of my favorites. Prisoners garnered positive reviews and was a box office success, making over $122 million at the global box office against a $46 million budget. Roger Deakins was nominated for Best Cinematography at the 2014 Academy Awards, but none of the performances by the cast, including Gyllenhaal, were nominated for any of the major awards that year. In order to market Prisoners, Warner Brothers had three main posters created. The poster that I have is the standard one sheet that has both Gyllenhaal and Jackman, and they also released individual character posters for both stars. The posters were created by Art Machine, a design firm founded in 1999 that's still going strong today. Did they use the original one sheet for the physical media? Let's see what I was able to find. So first up for prisoners for physical releases, we have of course the DVD. And as you can see, they basically just use the one sheet. It's exactly the same design. <laughs> I mean, at least here we've got a French Canadian director involved, so that's kind of nice. Secondly, we have the Blu ray. This comes with a slipcase, and it's a slightly different design that they've used for this cover. And these two are kind of squaring off, but they're not looking at each other. It's very awkward, I would say. The only thing that is good is there's more prominent placement of the maze. Overall, still not a great design, not a great representation of this movie at all. Once again, we've got the spine, of course, with the French and English on the same spine. They just seem to be lazy about that for some reason. I do really like this disc design with the maze. I wish they had released a poster like that, because I think that looks really, really good. It's very interesting. Digital ultraviolet, which as far as I understand is no longer a thing. And finally, we have the deluxe soundtrack. I was very excited to order this. I love Johan Johansson. This is a direct scene from the film running down the street looking for Jackman's daughter. They did kind of an interesting typography here. I think this is supposed to be reminiscent of those journal entries. I haven't actually seen the inside of this yet, so let's open this up. That's really, really nice. It's got a matte finish. It's not super, super gloss. So we've got Hugh Jackman and Paul Dano. We've got Viola Davis, Jake Gyllenhaal. And even this I like quite a bit. I think this is a still photo from Hugh Jackman's apartment building and a lot better than the marketing that the film had going for it when it was first released, that's for sure. I particularly like this cover and this montage. Those two things together, I think, show off the movie a lot better than the movie poster does, if I'm honest. So what do I actually think of this poster? What is the art score? A is for aesthetics. How good is the design? How pleasing is the typography? The overall visuals and the vibe of the poster? Basically, is it nice to look at? So aesthetically, I think this poster has some real issues. It's a very tired, somewhat lifeless design. There's no energy to it and very little that grabs my attention. We have our two main characters with Gyllenhaal below staring at the production credits and Jackman above looking off into the distance. There's no real cohesion with these two characters appearing on the same poster. They're both looking in slightly different directions, so it's just sort of odd. 
The fact that this film is as detailed as it is in both visuals and characters makes it all the sadder that this is the best that they could come up with to advertise such a layered movie. I mean, why not introduce some complexity, some creativity? They clearly hired a production crew to write mazes all over a house for the film production. It probably took weeks to do that. And marketing is looking at this and saying, yeah, this is good enough. We've got the stars. They're kind of looking in the same direction. Check. It's a shame. And to me, the most glaring thing that I can never unsee is the fact that Hugh Jackman's beard kinda looks fake here. I don't know why. It's not fake, it's real. I know it's a real beard, but the lighting and the positioning of his face just ultimately makes this kind of look like a beard that was glued on. Look at the packaging for this fake beard. And then look at Hugh Jackman in the poster. Spoiler alert, it's the same image. And I know he doesn't have a fake beard. I mean, he clearly has a real beard in the movie. Oh. <laughs> Jackman could use this portrait again if he ever wanted to release an album of somber acoustic ballads. Where am I going? The typography is the only part of this poster that I actually like. The serif font works well, and they integrated the maze into the O. It's not fantastic, but at least they tried something here. And now, it's tagline time. Every moment matters. That's technically true, and it's not a terrible tagline. It doesn't give away the central plot, but I wouldn't say that it adds much to the poster either. For aesthetics, I'm gonna give this poster a one out of three. R is for representation. Does it represent the film very well? Does it match the look and feel and the ideas it's presenting? Is there a sense of story? The color grade is reminiscent of the film itself. The maze is featured, but could have been way more prominent. They do that with some of the physical media that we saw, but not this poster. What we're left with is really a poster that could be for any generic thriller. The kind of thing you see on streaming services now and wonder if it will be any good and aren't entirely shocked to find that it's not. For representation, I'm giving this a one out of three. T is for titillation. Does this poster inspire any excitement or intrigue? Does it make us wanna go watch the movie? I mean, if you happen to be major fans of Jackman or Gyllenhaal and would see absolutely anything that they might be in, then this might strike your fancy. Maybe? It's giving you no other information. It's not even hinting at the fact that this movie is layered, has symbolism, and... Maybe? Ugh. For titillation, I am giving this a 1 out of 3. So with a current art score of 3 out of 10, we're all becoming prisoners of this poster's mediocrity. But what of that final point? What did my wife think of this movie poster? Well, there you have it with a final art score of three out of 10. Ouch, this is our lowest score yet. This poster is not reflecting the quality of the film it's attempting to promote. Good art makes you feel, and this poster makes me feel motivated. The whole reason I wanted to talk about this movie at all is so that I can tell even more people how good a film I think this is. And ultimately that's what is required to elevate some of these movies to the heights that you think that they should reach. Movies like Office Space, Shawshank Redemption, even Vertigo, MacGruber. It takes people constantly talking about them to anyone who will listen. I'm not gonna be making a habit of featuring a lot of posters on this channel that I don't actually like that much, but when I do, it's because I think the movie has something special to offer, a special quality that the movie poster was not able to capture. And I think that's entirely true for Prisoners. I encourage you to give it a watch. If you're in Canada, it's streaming on Crave. And if you're in the US, it is streaming on Netflix. This poster simply just doesn't do it justice. And then go see Villeneuve's latest, Dune Part 2. Probably gonna be another masterpiece. I had auditioned for a part in Prisoners, hadn't gotten it. I should uh, get over my bitterness about that, <laughs> but for some reason... Didn't get uh, it. <laughs> I believe any good collection needs to be shared. And in the spirit of that, for this episode, I'm gonna be giving away 
the vinyl soundtrack to Prisoners, with music composed by the late, great Johan Johansson. If you'd like a chance to win this record, all you need to do is head over to my Patreon, the link to which will be in the description box below. We do major giveaways with each episode of Paper and Light. When you support me on Patreon, your name is entered into a draw, and we ship worldwide. I really appreciate that support, which goes towards getting even more interesting movie posters to show you in the future. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this eerie look at Prisoners. For our next episode, we're gonna be taking a look at a comic book film from 2009. Mm. Make your guess in the comments about what movie that might be. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I can't wait to show you more. Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter? Where have you gone to? Where's my daughter? Where's my daughter?